Hello, so I want to give you guys tips for how to avoid the flu. Um, I'm <laughs> this this comes from nothing pertinent to me in particular. Uh, I was fighting something off and <laughs> I thought, man, I should shoot a video on how to how to fight something off. Hopefully there's a happy ending in the story and Jen wins the bat Jen's immune system wins the battle. Um so really quickly, especially with influenza, um, this year kind of kind of a we got some badass strains of influenza. Um, the, you know the influenza virus mutates constantly. Um, so even in a given year, you have hundreds of strains sometimes. So keep that in mind. What you get from somebody else may not be the same thing that they had once it once you get it. Um, so prophylactically, what can you do? Um, I am a huge fan of, and this is by no means some kind of like commercial. I just happen to have this brand on hand. And I would say the person <laughs> at my graduation from med school, actually, who got an honorary degree was the guy from Gaia. So <laughs> Greg, um, so he was at my graduation, guys. Um, black elderberry syrup. You can get this at Whole Foods. Um, and it doesn't have to be Gaia. Gaia is good quality, I will say that. Uh, but, you know, there are other good qualities. You do specifically want syrup, not a tincture. Because what happens with plants is... Um, Different constituents end up in the end product based on how you, uh, what part of the plant, number one, is harvested and also how it's extracted, the constituents. So in this case, it's the berries and it's into a syrup, which is a, a good venue for getting the stuff, this particular properties that you want out of the elderberry syrup. Um, if you happen to be a botanical person and want to go out and as my friend Heath <laughs> fellow fellow colleague he'll go harvest elderberries and to make his own elder, elderberry syrup I would love to get my hands on some that has been homemade but alas I have not yet um, but it's it's potent in terms of the number one the vitamin A content the vitamin C content the, the bioflavonoids all of which are really helpful for the immune response. Um, especially as those of us pertains, to those of us on this channel that I'm assuming many of us have HPA axis stuff going on. If you're under chronic stress, you're burning through your C in general. And so ha consuming things rich in vitamin C when you're trying to fight off something like influenza is ideal. But the reason I bring up elderberry syrup first is because it is Sambucus nigra, um, is the, that's the botanical name, is specifically in several trials, I want to say in, in Israel and also Switzerland, um, it's specifically anti-influenza, um, not just antiviral, but anti-influenza. Um, they compare, you know, people consuming elderberry syrup versus people who are not consuming elderberry syrup, all of which came down with the flu. And the course was shortened by, I want to say, two to three days um, in the, the elderberry syrup consumers. Um, in, this, in cold and flu season, I just take a teaspoon a day um, prophylactically to try to prevent. And then if I know I get exposed, like, as is my suspicion, um, I amp it up walk around with a bottle guzzling it all. No, it gets expensive guys <laughs> to do that. Um, so elderberry syrup, that's probably thing number one. Thing number two, vitamin C, which is in elderberry syrup, but rich sources of it, um, you know, go towards a lot of your, your fruits and vegetables that have high vitamin C content. Keep in mind that vitamin C is heat sensitive. So if you're cooking, you're losing a lot of the content of the vitamin C. So eat your orange raw rather than cooked. Big shocker there. Um, in terms of 
So C, also the way to dose vitamin C, um, you just do it to GI tolerance. You'll actually absorb more um, if you're fighting off something. So if you're concerned that you're having, consuming too much vitamin C, uh, the sign would be an osmotic diarrhea. Um, it'll go through the GI and then not get absorbed. So if, short of getting that or stomach cramping sometimes because it's acidic, um, if that's not happening for you, then you're, you're likely at a, a perfectly fine level of vitamin C. Um, so, which is around, I mean, it depends. I mean, I, I just do the, this does have a little tiny bit of sugar in it, which is not so good, but, uh, I just do the packets in, in water, um, to try to push the fluids too. Uh, and that it's a good way to just keep seeing it all day long. Um, thirdly, you know, a little E, it's a fat soluble vitamin, uh, pretty good for immune system boost, uh, A in food, I'm going to say, um, A is one of those you have to be really careful with, uh, cause it's teratogenic. So it can actually cross the, cross the placental barrier. Um, and like if someone unknowingly is pregnant and un doesn't know it, um, you have to really be careful with A, even though it's a vitamin. So this is one of those cases where just cause something is natural does not mean it's safe. Um, with, so with A, I tend to steer towards um, do the A in the food. So kale, really rich in vitamin A. Um, and so eating foods is going to be a different way to get at that same, um, get higher levels of A, uh, without, without the risk. Cause in your foods, it's much, a much safer way to consume. Also eat antimicrobial plants. If you're wondering what those are. Um, I will hold up some examples. If you just cook, with a holy ton of onions, I mean, just put them in everything in, this, in the winter, like your soups, your, your, your chilies, your stews, your, I mean, onions flavor everything. So they're great. Allium sepa, that's the botanical name. Allium sativa, garlic. Both, uh, allium, the alliums are, uh, antibacterial, antiviral. I want to say even antifungal in nature. And so, dang it, that's going to, I mean, it, there, you know, in uh, a lot of places in the world where they, you cannot, they don't have refrigeration, they will cook with number one, a lot of spices and a lot of onions and garlic and even ginger, um, all of which are antimicrobial. So it makes complete sense that that is one way to, um, to boost the immune response and also you know, protect your food. The other thing would be avoid sugar in the diet. Uh, sugar blunts the immune response. And so um, just don't be eating it if you've been exposed to now with the exception of, I mean, elderberry syrup, this is really sweet and there is pretty high sugar content, but it's the sugar from the bat, from the berries, um, from the fruit. And so it's, you know, that's going to be the only sugar you're consuming, guys. Um, let's see. Push the fluids. Rest. Uh, listen to your body, right? Um, this week I've been experiencing, um, you know, since I'm feeling like I'm, I'm coming down with something, I have not gone to the gym because um, I'm trying to rest and get more sleep and listen to my body. So that's, that's really important too. Um, you know, don't, don't push it. Don't burn the candle at both ends. The more you stress things out, um, the more likely your immune system is not going to be able to keep up. You will lose the battle. So that's all I got for you. Um, I hope that's useful. Like I said, influenza this year kind of kind of a nasty little bugger this year. Um, I've seen a few cases in the, in the news about, um, you know, uh, 20 somethings dying of the flu. I mean, typically the flu, uh, in a given year will kill 
Uh, people that die of it tend to be immune compromised or older or, you know, really young babies. Um, but when you start to see the healthiest parts of the population um, getting ill and dying, uh, that's, that's concerning um, and worth taking seriously. So if you do get sick, stay home. That helps prevent the spread of the flu to all your coworkers. Um, and like I said, take it seriously. So I'll let you know how it goes. <laughs> like I said, elderberry syrup and I are friends. Good friend this week. So, and I'm, I'm a little, you can hear, you can hear my voice. I'm a little nasally, a little congested, but adio.